Wayne, in an earlier program I mentioned that when I came to faith, I, I thought I was the only Jewish person in the world that believed in Jesus. And uh, there weren't a lot of Jewish believers at that time. It was, we were odd ducks. And, and uh, today, there's been a lot of changes. And even in the land of Israel, where one would think it's, how could there possibly be a Jewish person who believes in Jesus in Israel, where all the Jewish people, the religious people live? Uh, let's unpack that because there's a secret that our audience needs to understand that there are now many Jewish believers, many Jewish congregations, and in fact, God has called you to help facilitate many of these fellowships. When we went there in 1983, there were about 500 Jewish believers, those that would publicly identify themselves that way. And today, the latest estimate I'm hearing is about 20,000 Jewish believers in Jesus. Tremendous. So there's been a tremendous change. That's revival. I think so. That's revival yeah. among the Jewish people. And I am told that that number worldwide is probably in the hundreds of thousands. There's been a survey done by the Pew Research uh, company and in fact have found several hundred thousand uh, Jewish believers worldwide. Most of them are in a traditional church context. They're not in a messianic con uh, congregation, but they're there. And that was not the case. When I came to faith, there was, uh, I was, I learned later that there was somewhere between 5,000 and 7,000. Mm -hmm. If in, w when you went to Israel, there were five hundred believers and now there's 20,000, that's an incredible percentage increase. If 5,000 around the world is now hundreds of thousands, how could we say anything other than God is reaching the Jewish people with the message of who Jesus is as our Jewish Messiah? Yeah. Ezekiel 37, there's this incredible vision that the prophet gets of dry bones scattered in the nations they come together, reintegrated, bone to bone, ligaments, flesh, skin comes upon those bones. There's a physical restoration of the scattered Jewish people back to their own land. What was missing was the breath of God yes. so that that body is not just a corpse but a living being. And in fact, it says in verse 11 that these bones are the whole house of Israel. What I see today is that the breath of God is breathing now into this physical nation, physical Jewish people in the land of Israel. You know the word, you know this well, the word for breath is ruach. It's the same word that's used for spirit and wind. And the prophet is told to speak to the four winds, that those winds would breathe into these bones that they would come to life. That's God's spirit. And what we have now, I believe, are the breezes of God's Spirit blowing on the land. But we're going to have wind gusts and we're going to have hurricane force winds in the last of the last days. So there's going to be great revival. Paul said in Romans chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, this secret. We're talking about secrets. This mystery, uh, my brethren, that hardening in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come, then all Israel shall be saved. I believe that fullness, the word is pleroma in the Greek, means fullness as in filling up, as in the filling of God's presence and spirit. In Ephesians, it talks about being filled with the presence of God. I believe that in these latter days, there's going to be Christians from around the world filled with God's spirit, that are going to have a powerful influence upon the Jewish people and the nation of Israel. As they come up, they visit, they see, they share their faith, share their lives, that this will be a key to the salvation of Israel. And the breath of God, the same breath that we've breathed in as spirit-filled believers, is going to breathe into these bones. They're going to come to life. Revival is coming. We already taste it, but the, uh, the full measure of that is on its way quickly. Uh, Wayne, give me your opinion. I, I feel that the, the measure of influence that religious Jews have in our country and perhaps internationally is out of proportion 
to the actual numbers of what ultra-Orthodox Jews really have as a census within the population of Jews around the world. And in fact, Messianic Jews have grown in such numbers in recent years that uh, we don't have the measure of influence that our numbers would represent. I think that's true. I think there is an embarrassment uh, about Messianic Jews. Some would see them even as a cult that uh, somehow it's going to undermine Israeli society. There's gonna, it's going to increase assimilation. It's going to uh, influence their children in a wrong direction. And so in some ways there's a desire just to push them to the side and not give them a platform, whether it's in the media or in political affairs. But we believe that's changing too. Uh, I can say that there are a number of Jewish believers in Jesus in Israel that are contemplating running for political office. Wow. And they're well educated, uh, some of them lawyers. And uh, I think that they would make great leaders. That would be a dramatic shift and an incredible opportunity to have the testimony of godly believers in Jesus who are Jewish living out their lives as they live out their faith. I think a lot of Jewish believers being first generation and still finding their way, their identity within the greater Israeli society are afraid to go out into the marketplace or into the political realm uh, being, you know, without experience in those areas. I've helped to develop just in the last year something called First Fruits and it's actually to raise up Jewish believers as entrepreneurs. And so we're training entrepreneurship and so we believe that we're to be salt and light in regular society and not just to be in full-time ministry but to really make an impact among those people that would never walk inside a Messianic congregation or maybe even encounter a Messianic Jew. Well, when we come back, there's going to be some more secrets of Israel exposed. And we're going to do something kind of different. Uh, I'm going to let uh, our audience ask some of their questions. I have some questions from Facebook friends that uh, uh, questions you want to ask Wayne, so stick around. <laughs> 